For many years, Zelda fans have speculated on the purpose of the bottom of the well. A logical explanation is that it was once a place of torture. This would explain the endless prison cells and chains, or the many devices and crosses, which we can only assume were used to strap the victims on. It's also likely many of the victims died during these torture sessions, as you can blatantly see the remains of many skeletons, and it's almost impossible to talk about the mysterious well without mentioning the terrifying creature known as Dead Hand. But although the bottom of the well may be a very eerie, disturbing place, it's likely that only the worst types of creatures and criminals were placed down here, probably for information or just to inflict as much pain as possible. It's a cruel way to go, but one that is justified in the world of Hyrule, given the pure evil that roams the darkest places of the land. I mean, look at this bloody thing. Is it not just one of the creepiest things you've ever seen? Ugh, okay, that's enough of that. Now it may seem like there is no punishment worse than this horrifyingly dirty damp well, but there actually is. Several years after the ending of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, the day came for Ganondorf's sentence to be carried out. The ancient sages removed him from his cell within the grounds and took him to the mirror chamber atop the roof of the prison, home to the Mirror of Twilight. Here the sages chained Ganondorf to a stone slab. Though he strained against his bonds, the King of Thieves looked on as the sages gathered ceremoniously before him, standing in a line in front of the Mirror of Twilight and producing a sword of pure light. The Sage of Water brandished the blade, and at one swift stroke impaled the King of Evil through his torso, creating a glowing wound on his chest. It was at this moment, however, when his body was damaged to the point of death, that the symbol of the Triforce of Power appeared on the back of Ganondorf's hand, preventing him from dying. His strength restored, Ganondorf viciously lashed out, straining against his chains, even as the Sword of the Sages was still stuck in his chest. After freeing one of his hands, he then promptly showed the back of his hand to the sages. The sages were shocked to see the symbol in his hand, not understanding how he could have attained the power of the gods. Ganondorf broke his remaining chains and rushed forward, obliterating the Sage of Water with a mere touch of his hand. He then pulled the sword of the sages out of his chest with ease and turned the blade upon its owners. Shocked by this, the sages activated the Mirror of Twilight. Ganondorf, who had been standing directly in the path of the Twilight Mirror, was caught in the portal's path and was pulled backward toward it. Ganondorf let out a loud scream as he was transformed into Twilight Matter and sucked through the portal just as it closed. This would not kill Ganondorf, it would imprison him and prevent him from invading Hyrule again. Or would it? The Twilight are a peaceful race of oddly shaped shadow beings who occupy the Twilight Realm. It's believed that the Twilight are descendants of a tribe of Hylian sorcerers from Hyrule who are referred to as interlopers. Eons ago, the interlopers were condemned to the Twilight Realm by the Golden Goddesses of Hyrule as punishment for their misgoverned attempt to use magic to claim the Triforce. Their old magic became known as the Few Shadow, an instrument of dark power. However, during their failed attempt to conquer the Sacred Realm, their fused shadow was split into four pieces and scattered throughout the Twilight Realm and Hyrule. The tribe lived and evolved in the Twilight Realm for centuries in isolation, mere shadows of what they once were. Over time, they became accustomed to their surroundings and came to accept their fate. While some learned to love the beautiful peace that could only be found in Twilight, others felt that they were being oppressed by the people of the Light World. The Twilight lost most of their powerful abilities, but they still possess some magical talent, and even teleportation is possible for the strongest Twilight. Zant is a powerful Twilight who served in the royal household of the Twilight Realm. He believed he would be next to rule the realm, but the Twilight were wary of Zant, fearing his ambition and desire for conquest would lead to a repeat of their ancestors' foolishness. As a result, rule went to Princess Midna a decision that would lead Zant to hate the royal family of the Twilight Realm and make him seek his own path. Zant would look to the heavens for an answer, and Ganondorf, who was now cast into the Twilight Realm, would answer. Ganondorf would share his mystical abilities of the Triforce with Zant, and together they would easily overthrow Princess Midna. Relinquishing her of her powers, 
changing her to an imp and exiling her from the Twilight Realm. A terrible fate for the princess, but it would be the peaceful inhabitants that would suffer more. Zant now in full control of the Twilight Realm and wielding the power to obliterate any opposers would lash out in fits of rage, turning the once peaceful inhabitants into monsters. Zant would eventually engulf the world of Hyrule in Twilight and quickly start deploying his Twilight minions to invade the kingdom of Hyrule. They would quickly be forced from their peaceful realm into a realm mixed with Twilight. Twilight beings are incredibly sensitive to light and being exposed to any amount of light could be fatal but Zant didn't really care. Zant now fully understanding his magical abilities would begin to experiment on the Twilight race. His own race. After deploying endless amounts of Twilight monsters, Zant would create his strongest being yet, the Shadow Beast. Shadow Beasts are very dark, willowy, intelligent creatures. They drop out of portals all across the Kingdom of Hyrule and are sometimes referred to as Twilight Messengers. This could be because of their ability to sneak information to one another and send this intel to Zahn. Most Shadow Beasts travel in packs, which makes them incredibly dangerous and difficult to deal with. They are also incredibly strong, which allowed them to defeat the many soldiers guarding Princess Zelda, despite being heavily outnumbered by Zelda's troops. It's even hinted by Barnes, who owns the bomb shop in Kakariko Village, that they are not only composed of transformed Twilight, but also have the ability to turn humans into their kind. I think it's safe to assume that being transformed into a shadow beast and forced to work for an evil usurper, stripped from your own realm and placed into a realm where too much exposure could quite literally kill you, is perhaps one of the worst punishments given to not only one or two, but the entire Twilight race. Zana turned almost all of his people into some kind of Twilight monster and forced them all to work under his command to take back control of Hyrule. Many beasts were slain by Link and Midna because they had no control over their actions and were brainwashed by Zant to attack and kill every living being in Hyrule, and many, many innocents died for a pointless cause. Now you'd be surprised to hear this, but Zant is as much of a victim as the rest of the Twilight, for he too was brainwashed. The Triforce of Power never belonged to Zant, it always remained with Ganondorf. Ganondorf only loaned some of his powers to Zant and Zant having never experienced power like the Triforce before, was instantly corrupted by it. Zant would eventually come to his senses though and see Ganondorf for what he was, but it was already too late for many of the Twilight. Ganondorf was the real reason for the Twilight's suffering, and this is certainly not the first time Ganondorf has attempted to destroy an entire race. The Goron race also suffered many losses due to being slowly fed to the fire dragon Volvagia, and this had massive impacts on the Gorons, including near extinction. Ganondorf almost accomplished the very same thing with the Twilight beings. The majority of the Twilight race had already turned into minus beasts, and many others were slain by Link. Few remained in the Twilight Palace and could be returned to their normal form, but it's clear that without the threat of Ganondorf and Zant removed, they would surely be transformed back into beasts and sent into the world of Hyrule. The fate of the Twilight race rested entirely on Link and Midna. If not for our heroes, then the Twilight would have been stuck in their monstrous minds and bodies, serving Zahn unconsciously forever. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to drop a like, and why not consider subscribing for more Zelda videos like this one. Also remember to follow me over on Twitter, and if you'd like, you can always check out our amazing Discord server too. All links will be in the description box below. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, then consider joining via YouTube membership for as little as 99 pence a month. And once again, thank you so much, and I'll catch you next time.